you know what's wild is most families don't talk about money and most entrepreneurs don't talk about money and most leaders don't talk about money. It's like this weird thing inside of our world that is just like completely the wrong perspective. It's not that they've made mistakes and they're insecure. It's that they don't want to come over as greedy or money hungry or money is their God. And so they do two things. They hide they don't talk about it or they feel ashamed and so therefore they sweep it under the cover or they've made so many mistakes that they're just not really quite sure how to articulate it. And as an entrepreneur, I know the superpower of money and cash and how to grow a financial machine that spits off a lot of currency. And I'm not ashamed about it and I want to share it with you because I've got 11 points I'm going to share. I'm actually saving the last two for the end because they're amazing. And the truth is I've helped a lot of people create opportunity in their life and I see entrepreneurship as a vehicle to help people get anything they want in life. And so I want you also to grow and scale your own company. And so today I'm going to go over these 11 steps or these rules about money for entrepreneurs, by entrepreneurs, so you can get anything you want in life. The number one thing, and this is probably the most crucial, is the money that you make. The revenue, the margin, the profits, the money that you make is not actually money. It's a scorecard. And if you think of an NBA basketball game and there's a big scoreboard up there, your bank account is the scoreboard. And so you're not actually going after money. You're going after the scoreboard. So that's the number one thing. The result is the money, but the the actual entrepreneurial energy and effort and the, the fun and excitement of the game is the scorecard. What's up on the board? What's up there? You know, how much you grew, what your profit is, but it's not the game. The game is solving problems for other people, hopefully your clients. So the game is creation, you know, solving problems, you know, making the world a better place. That's the game that we're in. And the scorecard is simply your revenue. The number two thing, and this is really important, is that revenue is like the air that you breathe. Literally, you cut off air and you're dead. And businesses are just like that. If you're growing revenue, it takes care of a lot of issues, meaning you could have operational issues, you could have sales issues, you can have marketing issues, you could have product issues, meaning you, your product or the service that you provide may not be the best. In fact, a lot of companies have won having subpar products. Think Microsoft, think Ford. Uh, there's a lot of options out there if your products suck. But here's the deal. If you're not growing revenue, then your company is actually on the verge of dying. And so this number two money thing for entrepreneurs is just simply, number one, money is the scorecard. Number two, revenue growth and growing your company is like the air that you breathe. It's the most important thing. It's the one singular focus that everybody within the company has to have because if you're not growing, you're dying. Okay, number three is cash flow and cash flow management. Now, why it lands as number three is there's nothing else in business that has killed more businesses than the lack of cash flow or this mismanagement. It's so complicated, they don't even have courses on it. It's so complicated that nobody explains it. It's so complicated that most businesses fail to implement it correctly. The number third thing is cash flow management. And I'm gonna give you a couple of examples to pay attention to as entrepreneurs, because that's all I can actually do. Because the business actually defines the cash flow model more than anything else in the world. And you need to be very specific about the issues with cash flow. So the number one issue is just how soon your customers pay you when you deliver services. Number two is how much inventory versus sales velocity. It's a big deal to have too much inventory or not enough. Both of those things can kill any businesses. Number three is bad cash management, meaning you invest in, a, in some sort of program or something that happens and there's no return on investment or what you thought was the return on investment takes 10 times longer to actually come back to the company. So number three is really an important thing. It's cash flow management, projections, knowing exactly when to collect the cash, when to spend the cash and how much to keep in the bank. This is complicated because it's the number three reason it kills more companies than any other thing when you think of money and entrepreneurship. Number four is model. Model is actually broken down into like a cross. The top of the cross is high quality, at the bottom is low. On the right axis, it's high price and low price, and you have to know who you serve and how you serve them. This is a really important point because if you're a low price, low quality, and you don't get mass 
market adoption, then you're going to go the way of Radio Shack, the way of Bed Bath & Beyond and many other companies, things at Walmart, things on Amazon. You have to be very careful. But because they have such volume and they can sell to the entire market, they're selling to as many people as possible, they can actually live in that low price, low quality because of many People don't care what the shirt looks like, they just need a shirt to wear. Also, if you're a high quality and a high price product and you fail to create brand, then you're not gonna go anywhere either. You're not gonna actually create sales and therefore you know, have a business. I'm gonna give you an example. A high quality, high price product might be a Louis Vuitton or a Mercedes car that's in the top right. And so both models are viable, high quality, high price, low price, low quality. You just have to know exactly who you are and focus on those intended customers. Number five is the financial model. And there are certain metrics that are financial and based and money based that really matter to a business. Most entrepreneurs know one or two, but most simply don't measure them all. And I'm gonna go through the most important ones. First is your margin and why this matters, like the margin, the number that you drop to the bottom line. I was just explaining this to another entrepreneur just last week, but if you're under 10% in margin, then your business is actually in a place of concern. And between 10 and 15, you've got health and above 15% margin, you're in a great spot. And so margin is a big deal. The number that you drop to your uh, profits, meaning what you tell the government you make every month, every year, year over year is probably the number one financial metric that you want to actually have inside your business that has to do with money. The other one is a lifetime value of a client. How long, once you get a client, how much money do you extract for them and how long do you keep them as customers? That's the second most important. And these are the things that people pay money for, meaning if you wanna sell your business tomorrow, if you wanna walk away from your business, these are the things that an a potential acquirer will look, actually look at to determine whether or not they're interested in purchasing. The last one is CAC, the customer acquisition cost. If you have 10 customers right now, how much does it cost to go out and get 10 more? And then how long are you gonna keep them? Lifetime value. These three things are probably the most important financial or money model things to know about your business and they're a big deal for entrepreneurs. The next financial metric that you have to know is actually fourfold. One, industry. Two, vendor. Three, partners. Three, four, competitors. Now, let me explain. You want to know what the industry averages are for your business in your industry. So if you're in the financial services, guess what? There's a number. Everybody charges 1% or they do a flat fee on average. So what you want to find out is what's the financial data for my industry. Next, you go to the vendors. Hey, who are the vendors that serve my industry and what do they charge? You want to know this information because it helps you get informed decisions around whether or not you should bring in these vendors or whether or not your model's in line with what other people in your industry are actually charging. The other place is your competitors. So for instance, what I was looking at was an industry that was shrinking versus growing. I was looking at opportunity being taken away versus actually opportunity being added on. The demand was going down, there was more and more automation. And so I was looking at all the competitors, I was looking at the industry, I was looking at my data compared to their data, and it all of the value was my effort, my individual effort in the business versus what was happening outside of the business and in the industry on a whole. So this one, this number six, is really getting clear financial metrics inside your industries for your competitors, for the vendors that exist in that industry. Understand the economics of the whole ecosystem so that you can make informed decisions about your business. And this is a masterclass in actually growing for entrepreneurs, the rules of money, because you know, you hear raising tides, raise all ships. That's the case in business. If the industry is growing, if the margins are good, if they're healthy, and if there's excitement and people are pouring into that industry, that's a good industry to be a part of. Think travel agents, think insurance brokers. These are industries that over time are going to shrink and shrink and shrink and be harder for entrepreneurs to make impact in. So that's my advice for number six, which is just 
know the industry financial models and the metrics that happen out there so you can make informed decisions about your business. So the principle on data, and this is number seven, and it's pretty simple. You have to be like the Germans and simply report on a regular interval over the long term. And if you can visually represent the growth or the lack of growth, it's a pretty big, powerful impact to a business. So what you want to do is over time, track your financial metrics and then put them on a line graph. Now, I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs don't have historicals or don't have current P&Ls and balance sheet and cash flow statements that report over the lifetime of their entire business. Now, that sounds crazy, but it happens a lot. And so this one, number seven, is just report like the Germans, have the financial data, put it on a screen, put it over time, put it line graph so that you can see progress towards your most important financial goals. Number eight are your vendors and making sure that your vendors have a financial mindset to add value to your business. And I'm gonna give you a couple of examples, real world examples from my own business so that I can drive this point home. Number one, because we serve the US and Canada and we individually serve people in different states, guess what? We are required to file an income st tax statement for each of these states that we're selling products and services in, which is crazy as an entrepreneur. And that, that hit when we grew to $20 million in revenue. We didn't have to do it until then. And so the point of having a great financial partner is that our CPA understood exactly what our business model was, exactly our finances, and was able to enable that tax reporting and actually handle that work for us without it being a huge distraction for our business. And so if you think through like, who's your attorney, who's your insurance broker, who's your CPA, who's your tax advisor. These are four vendors who can be super impactful to your business if they understand your business, they have a good financial mind, and they partner with you to help you grow and scale. Now, here's another example. I met with an entrepreneur last week, and she had been operating her business for 10 years. She didn't even have her own name trademarked. We have a fantastic attorney relationship, both in-house and out of house attorneys representing our business, and they care about our business, so of course, Getting trademarked, super easy, and yet without the right partners who understand your model and how you generate revenue and who you are in the world, you're just not gonna succeed long term. So my advice here is get great partners, educate them on your business, and have them help you get all your financial metrics that you wanna achieve as an entrepreneur. We're in um, Vegas, and the wife and husband get into a fight, and the husband is like, I'm so sorry, and the way that he makes it up to her is they buy a $10,000 purse together. And Whitney and my, my wife, we look at each other and go, oh my God, that's crazy. But see, the reality is that she and I have the same value set when it comes to money and how we spend money, and they have the same value set. Like It is fully in their world that a $10,000 bag is a way to say sorry. That's not how we say sorry in my family. So Number nine is exactly the way you view money. You need to ha make sure that your generals view it the same exact way. Whoever you hire inside of your business needs to have aligned values and mindset around money and how you spend money. All right, number 10 is, and I left this one for the last because I think this is one of the most important pieces of being an entrepreneur and growing and scaling a very successful company. Money is typically a tool I like to view that tool as soldiers, and I send my soldiers out in order to recruit more soldiers and grow my army. This mindset is one that I think is very valuable for entrepreneurs or anyone who has to make an investment in a part of their business. So think about if you're hiring more salespeople, you're hiring more marketing people. The challenge is you're not sure how long it's gonna take to get those soldiers to come home, but the most important thing is that if you send your soldiers out, Hopefully they're not dying. You're recruiting more soldiers eventually to come back and grow your overall army. So this is the mindset that I have with money and how to grow your wealth over time as an entrepreneur. And it's a really important point. Now, number 11 is kind of, it's an extra, meaning it's is a bonus. And I think it's really important to note this because soft currency is just this, not the kind of currency you spend. It's the currency that is in your heart that you can share with your team members, the generals, the soldiers on your team. 
really important that you spin the soft currency telling people, hey, you're doing a great job or really appreciate you or this is amazing work, congratulations. The more soft currency you can spend with your people, the more likely you're gonna grow revenue and really create something special inside of your company, inside of your business, inside of your family. So my last and final piece of advice, spend the soft currency, tell people how much you appreciate them, they will help you grow your business.